if you RV long term in a motorhome, chances are you're going to need a tow vehicle. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how I convinced my wife to buy a souped up Jeep. Also, all the things you need to consider if you're looking to find a towed vehicle for RV full time life. But most importantly, we're going to share the best reason to get a Jeep. The we're gonna adventures. And the exploration, specifically in Yants Flats and Sands Hollow in southern Utah. We're in Zion, baby. Oh my god, look at this. As most of you guys already know, I can hardly convince my wife of what time of the day it is, let alone to get something I really, really want, something that she considers a toy. So I brought in the heavy hitter. A very close <laughs> friend of ours named Jason sat down with us and he explained to Mercedes why it was a good idea to get a Jeep. We also talk about all the considerations um, that you just need to think about before you choose your towed vehicle. We're also going to sprinkle in the best part about getting a Jeep, which is the fun and the exploration and the being able to go places that you normally wouldn't be able to get to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, Jeno. Here we go. <laughs> so Mercedes and I got into an argument. She wanted an electric car. I wanted something else. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else. I couldn't talk her into why a Jeep was better. And so I decided to call my friend Jason and... <laughs> well, the first thing was I didn't even want a tow car. I didn't think it was necessary. And so the first thing that Jason explained to me was why a tow car was actually necessary. Especially with a 31 foot rig, right? You've got to. I mean, if you're going for just a weekend, no problem, right? You hit the grocery store, get your stuff, go camp, you're, you're set, right? But you guys aren't going places where you can just call Uber, uh, you know? so. And I've seen people, you know, in our travels, we've seen people that pull in with no toad and they're here for a week, two weeks. Right. And then if you need something, stuck. you got to pull your hoses and disconnect to and take a ride. Do. Yeah. And, and matter of fact, we were in Texas with some friends and had no toad. And every time they had to go to the grocery store for nine weeks, you know, and they had to go twice a week because their refrigerator's, you know, two by two, <laughs> uh, you know, they're having to unplug everything and pack it all up. And it's just, it's not a pleasant way to go for long term great for a weekend so. so so there's three ways to pull a towed car right you got a car dolly which which is i think much better than actually a trailer it is because if smaller. you're a full-time rv yeah. and you're pulling a trailer it's just something else you have to do and store yeah. when you're not pulling and, and a lot of times they charge to store exactly if they have somewhere to store yes that's the other problem right a lot of places a lot of campgrounds don't have a storage area the right. ones that do a lot of times charge five five dollars a day right just or to more. store it somewhere else yep and then and, and sometimes they're behind locked cages. Right. So now you want to leave early in the morning? Nope, you're waiting until eight or nine o'clock until they open their Never locked thought of that, cage. man. Yeah. Uh, that. The campground we're at right now, the storage is across the street in a locked area. Oh. You can't leave before nine o'clock if you have to get your trailer out. Right, and Not so that that's where I was. <laughs> I knew for me, a tow dolly or a trailer was yeah. out. I just was yeah. not gonna do it. And so tell us why you picked a Jeep to, to as your tow. There's a multitude of reasons. Number one, it's one of the lightest four wheel drive vehicles that you can get. So four wheel drive is key for why? towing because you can put the transfer case in neutral and this isn't even true on all four-wheel drives. This is the other thing you got to be careful with. And a number of people have fallen into this trap. But with the Jeep, you can put the transfer case in neutral, and that disengages the entire drivetrain. And everything is disengaged. All that's happening here, your wheels are rolling. So I'm four down. Four down. Without, and without putting mileage on it, right? That was the first question I asked you. Exactly. You are not, you're, you're not putting miles on the odometer. Uh, you are still putting miles on your tires, yes. though, which is a, a thing that, you know, so okay. that's something I keep up with. And so I keep a log of all the miles that we tow. So I actually know what I've got for miles on my tires, when I need to rotate my tires, because it's obviously oh. off from the odometer in the Jeep. Okay, that's a good note. Good yep. point. Yep. So that's one thing to consider. But I've talked to people who have bought, gone out and bought Toyota 4Runners, for example. Four-wheel drive vehicle. What's the problem? Put, it, put the transfer case in neutral, you're ready to go. With the four runners and other four wheel drive vehicles, it doesn't fully disengage. So when the wheels are turning, it's turning the drive axle, which is turning the transmission. And within a few thousand miles, people have had massive problems with their transmission. What's the fix if you go, oh, I don't want to mess up my transmission. So every time you, uh, you, you go to move, you've got to crawl under there 
and take out all the bolts to drop your your drive shaft and then you get somewhere you got to climb back under and put the drive shaft back in and what it's, a pain in the butt can you imagine no yeah, yeah. so big and, pain in the butt and by the way if you're flat towing and you've dropped your drive shaft and you get into a, a gas station right if you're if you've got a gas motor home like us that's 40 feet now you're 65 feet right and all of a sudden you figure out you've got to back up well you can't back up flat towing you can for a few feet you've got to get somebody in the in the driver's right. seat steering but otherwise you've got to unhook put your drive shaft back in right otherwise you can't move the jeep so the jeep is is the best vehicle for it it's not, i'm not going to say there aren't other vehicles that you can tow there is even an electric car you can flat tow because i wanted a scion or like a honda because can't have i that you can no. have a ford fusion <laughs> that's it that is it because i wanted a small vehicle i'm like okay fine it's smart makes, car yeah like something tiny you can flat tow a smart car yep i hear a butt coming on but nope. it's a smart car <laughs> that's the butt. <laughs> so no but seriously i mean the jeep's just a it's an easy thing to tow you can tow a smart car i mean if you don't care about going and exploring anywhere and you literally are going to campgrounds and you just want a grocery getter you can you can take a smart car right um ford f-150s um dodge rams right they can all be flat to with the with the one caveat they all have to be four-wheel drive they can right. be flat towed if you want to pull a full-size truck but they're now you're getting into some some serious weight right especially right. if you've got a gas motor home that's right. a lot to pull and just like everything else with RVing, right it, it just you need to consider how you're going to use your toad exactly you know do you want to go places do you want to have four-wheel drive right. are you only going to be going to the shopping centers or state parks where you have to park or do you want to have access to some you know more cool stuff exactly exactly and that's where we've we have found that the jeep has led us in the last year and a half almost two years full timing we have seen things in our travels that we never would have seen if we had had just a conventional car right um, and then you know and then electric is a whole nother yeah animal right because now you've got to charge it and right um, you know there are campgrounds that won't allow you to charge your cars at the campground because you're using their electricity right so there's there's just so many and electric challenges. cars are expensive well they are you know i'd almost rather buy an old pinto yeah if i was going to have a regular car something just super cheap to pull around right super cheap and light. right yep. but for us in the way that we traveled i decided that jeepers we're going to sedona we're going into utah jeepers, we're going to zion it? we're going in all these beautiful places <laughs> everything we do we say is about uh freedom independence and adventure right the Jeep gives me adventure. It lets me go places that I just could never go in a regular car. It le allows me to really work an area and see places that I never could have seen had I not had a four-wheel drive. Exactly. And but, you would have either gone out renting, you either yeah. would have rented a four-wheel yes. drive to go see these things. Yep. And we saw that in Kanab. Everything was off-road to get there. Right. There were tours at $200 a person. Uh, or you could go rent a four by four or side by side, but you had to have a way to get out there in a four wheel drive right. vehicle. And it was just, I mean, I, we wouldn't have seen anything there if it hadn't been for the, having a Jeep. Now so. that raises an interesting point because we are only borrowing the class C that we're in now from Gigi at RV Advisor. We did quickly consider, well, let's just rent a car. Mm -hmm. It's not that simple because you have to set up the pull system yep. and every vehicle is going to be different and cost different amount of money. Now on our Jeep, you suggested that I went with the blue ox. Why'd you pick the blue ox? For the tow bar and all that, it's just, it's it's a 10,000 pound, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, I'm a firm believer in overkill. Overkill. You know, so I've got a 10,000 pound tow bar. I've got a 10,000 pound rated hitch. Uh, it's an 8,000 pound rated um, receiver on the motorhome. Right. So everything is overkill. My, the Jeep as it sits weighs probably 56 5800 pounds right. and you got to have that for peace of mind when you're pulling such a long way exactly rig. and then of course the brakes to me the most important thing right. in there are the brakes right um you want the jeep to be able to stop itself and not rely on the motorhome especially with hydraulic brakes in a, yep. in a gas motorhome right great point yeah great point so so there is some setup that you have to do once you there do is. choose 
your towed or your towed vehicle and it ended up costing Mercedes and I $4,200 to do this. So mm -hmm. Jason was helpful in that he explained to me what my husband wasn't willing to explain to me because when That's I asked not John, true. I tried to explain no. it to you, but you don't believe anything I say, babe. Because he told me that we needed to get a Jeep for the brand. And <laughs> That's how I sold it. It would be good, good for our brand, baby. And when I asked him, but why a Jeep and the dolly and all that stuff, he told me to Google it. But don't always rely on your friends because the one thing that Jason didn't tell me on that phone call was what Jeep really stands for. It's <gasps> What? Just empty every pocket. Yeah. You gotta so, own it. Just own it. You gotta so own it. So ladies, right? don't let your husbands watch this video. Right. Yeah. And we're actually getting ready to head out for the very first time since getting the Jeep with Jason and Amy. Uh, they have an Instagram channel called Take Your Taking Our Toys and Living without the G. And we're getting ready to head out. So we're gonna go over to Dixie Na uh, State Park. We're also gonna head over to Sand Hollow. Uh, for a few days and we are both super excited because we haven't actually taken the Jeep off-road yet and we've we're owned swimming. it for about five or six weeks. It's about to get dirty. So we're ex <laughs> we're super excited. Jeep's not for everybody, right? I mean, especially right now, the the, the price of Jeeps is going through the roof. Uh, it's just the demand. Yeah. And so that said, I would say if, if, you, if people are out there wanting to do uh, a, 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 a tow vehicle with a motorhome, um, but don't want to invest in another vehicle, I would say the car dolly um, is the way to go. But go do some research on car dollies because th there are some, and you've probably seen some as well, that'll actually just stand right up on right. end They're behind easy to, the motorhome. Yep. So you don't need separate storage and all that. And Great so then point. you just, the key there is it's got to be a front wheel drive. Right. Um, you know, what you don't want to mess with is having to pull the car backwards. And you can't, the, Whatever the drive wheels are need to be up on the dolly and pulling one backwards is a pain. So, right. Well, uh, and car dollies are impossible to back up. Oh yeah. C completely impossible. Yeah. So one of the things that I actually love the most about owning a Jeep is that, and it's, I mean, it's obvious, it looks fantastic. It's beautiful, right? It's great. But I didn't realize there was some, such a culture of Jeep people out there and they got this thing called the Jeep Wave. Absolutely. And when Mercedes and I started driving around in the Jeep, we noticed <laughs> that other people were waving at us. We saw so many Jeeps and everybody was so friendly. It's called the Jeep Wave and, and, and we love that. It just makes us feel part of another community that we were never a part of. When you are, and it's not just a wave. You look like you're in trouble. You will have within a half hour, every Jeep that goes by, you'll have every Jeep stop. Even when we've been over lowering the air pressure or putting pressure back into our tires, we had four or five Jeeps pull over right away and say, hey, you guys need help? No, we're good. And you get the Jeep wave and they're on their way. Exactly. If there are any other considerations for a tow vehicle that we may have missed, please be sure to put those in the comments. They help other people who are in the market for a tow vehicle. And also, please be sure to like, make sure you're subscribed and ring the bell. By doing that, you'll help us get our videos out to more people. We really hope that you guys enjoyed this video as much as we did in creating it. And so, thanks again for your support, and we'll see you in the next video. Freedom, independence, and adventure, baby!